Hi, it's Cameron Reynolds, and in this video, I want to address the Michael Palmer Pollen Patties. It's a little bit of a different variation, but we made a video. I'm going to leave it right up here. You can see how to make these yourself, and a lot of people were asking, how long do they store? What's the best way to store them? And so I tried out a couple different methods, and I didn't want to post it really quickly because I wanted to give about two months time in each method to see how they work. So I did two months in a deep freezer, two months in a refrigerator, all the same recipe, and then two months just leaving them in a container just like this one sitting inside the house. Now I don't have that for the video because I actually ended up using that the other day uh, without meaning to, but it is gone. But there's no mold or anything like that and it worked pretty good. We'll, we'll talk more about that in a second. First let's get into this hive and then we're going to apply some of this patty to the hive. And we'll address some of the issues and the nice things about this pollen patty mix. One is the fact that it is very affordable. It has been raining on us all day long. I don't know if you can hear the thunder in the background, but I've been rained on twice today. But it's just that time of the year in spring and you got to work the bees. I'm sure the bee's temperament today is going to be as wonderful as it has been all day. Not very good. Well, I thought I broke that loose. There we go. Good bit of bees right there. And they are, they have some brood in that top box. Looks like they're occupying about six of the frames up in that top box. Honey flow will be here in a couple weeks. And I'm really not doing this video to see where we're at with this colony, but when you get into a hive like this, you just can't help it. Just pull one frame. I pulled a frame of brood out of this colony so far because it just needed to cut back a little bit, gave it to another colony. We have some capped brood right here. And a little bit more on this edge frame. I think the queen's probably going up and working a little bit. Not hitting those edge frames quite as hard as she was back when it was a single. That looks pretty good right there. This colony made over 140 pounds of honey last year. And hopefully with the good honey flow, we'll do something similar. So, all right. She's definitely moved up into that second box, which isn't surprising this time of the year and the first week of April. So I've had these patties stored for two months. We are getting a lot of rain and windy days this coming week, it rained all day yesterday. It's rained most of the day today. Bees can't get out and work. We're trying to keep them building. And we're making splits and all kinds of different things. So a lot of times I leave this, but where the patty's going to be, I'm going to scrape this up a little bit. And this is all just gonna be drone brood anyways. Uh-oh, I think I hear some rain coming. All right, let's get to the patty. So right here, this was in a deep freezer for two months. And look at the texture right there. It's been thawed out for about a week. So I guess it was a little short of two months. But that consistency is still really good right there. Nice and thick. That's what you want right there. And been really happy with the affordability of these patties. Made them for just a little over a dollar a pound with no special deals, just um, buying Ultra B at the like the 50 pound bag price. Ooh, a couple of these bees are getting a little chippy and man, it is getting dark. You're going to throw some of that in there. So that's a perfect consistency for a patty. It's not running around. That's what we'd like to see right here. So the deep freezer worked really good. And you can see, this was the same way it was with the one that I left just in my room. And it's very hard on the edges right here where it was not quite covered with this saran wrap right here. So it will dry out over time, but it has done really good. On colonies like this that are strong, it, will, it won't dry out in the, the time frame that they'll eat it. 
it's the little colonies that take a, a while to eat it that are the problem with this drying out. Now this in the refrigerator, same recipe, it is thinner. I mean, look how easy it is to move that. So I don't know, we'll have to do another trial later and see if that is normal with storing it in the freezer, freezer in a fridge, sorry, in a Ziploc. But this is a little bit looser than I, what I'd like it to be because that's going to run. That's definitely running in this bag. It just moves around quite a bit. Some of it's just the weight in the flexible bag, but all we have to do is add a little bit of sugar or add a, a little bit more Ultra B that we can kind of work into this and get the thickness back to where we want it. Because I don't want this squirting out when I put these boxes back and running down all over the brood and in the larvae. So as far as storage goes, that's two months. I'd say in the freezer you could probably store these things for a year. Obviously fresher is better with everything, including real pollen. So try not to make more than what you need, but at the same time that's just kind of the nature of the beast. So how much are we going to give this colony? Probably about that much right there. And let's smoke them down and whew, those bees aren't happy with me. Give them a little extra smoke, get them out of the way. And just kind of spread this around a little bit. But yes, they store really good. That is a whopping patty right there, but they'll eat all that. And the rain is coming. It's starting to hit the tin roof behind me. Let's cut this up. And I'm going to scoop this out of the front. Tuck this over there a little bit. Oh, here comes the rain. Well, hope you're ready for a shower, Laurel. <laughs> here we go. Thanks for watching the videos.